and Warren to continue. Stewart on strike. That's well played too. It's short and uh, he waited for it. And having gone down the pitch once or twice, that's the sort of ball that he could then lean back on and cut. So, so far, Stewart's strategy has been a very effective one, and that too was a good shot. Magnificent bowling from War. Stewart, who's been looking to go down the pitch, looking to cut, hook, line, and sinker. Well, he certainly was enjoying the uh, the battle, Shane Warne, and he's won it with the flipper right on line, and that has really hurried on. Uh, just getting ready for Michael Atherton to face Shane Warne. Ah! Oh. Done him. That was a magnificent delivery. It beat Atherton all ends up. It looked to me as though he was playing for the spin, and that was a quicker top spinner. It wasn't the flipper. That is beautifully bowled. That was hurried onto him. Absolutely plumb. No doubt about that at all. And that is good bowling. Make sure there's plenty of pad there. That's not the ah! way to go. That could be out. That could well be out. My word, was it some glove or bat? That was a beautiful piece of work from Healy. Oh dear, they got it away, but how? I suppose it was a good shot in the end, but that was almost curtains. It was, it was a flipper, it stayed down, and Thorpe went for the pull shot. Ah! It's close, around the wicket, it has to be well back by Steve Randall. Unmoved. A lot of turn here, pitching in the rough and really darting back in. <laughs> Thorpe going well back, but that's probably missing leg stump from that angle and that turn. If they lose early wickets and allow a fresh Australian team to get a new batsman, then they've got problems. If they can keep the wickets intact till lunchtime, then the problems, the psychological warfare, all goes back on to Australia and particularly their captain, Mark Taylor. Oh! Got him! Well, that's magnificently bold. Taylor had a word with him and he has struck. Well, that was superb bowling. Now, whether or not it had anything to do with what Taylor had told him, I don't know. But Taylor ran all the way down the ground, came back and the next ball, he got him. Hick, who hasn't faced as much of Warren, certainly not as much as Thorpe faced. It's going to be interesting to see how he goes today against Warren. He's only faced one over of him today. Well, he's got his chance now. Oh, yes, he's got him. That's out. He's got him. It ran off the top of his gloves. Now, we did think that this was a bit of a danger for him. He used to pad away. He did this in the first innings, left his gloves down there. That ball hit the pad, ran over the top of the glove, I reckon, perhaps even a bit of the handle and bat, and Healy was as quick as a, quick as a flash. You watch this. Well, he didn't get the bat and gloves out of the way. He stuck the pad there, but it hit the pad onto the gloves, and that's out. That's smart wicket-keeping. Slice of luck, you might say, for Shane Warren in Australia, but uh, you make your luck. And that's uh, the right idea get in the pad there but not getting the hands and gloves out of the way big trouble england four for 220. 52 graham gooch he will be facing shane warne will be doing the bowling he's coming around the wicket to the right hander looking to bowl into the rough outside graham gooch's legs slightly open handed grip Cut! a little bit of pad but not much bad in that one Gooch, he's gone for the sweep again. That is a very good catch. The ball was attempted from outside off stump. He tried to hit it over the top of mid wicket. Obviously, a premeditated shot, a little nick on it, and Healy kept his eye on the ball outside off stump. And that is five wickets for Warren. Warren to De Freitas. Ah! Always bowled him around his legs. Yes, he's hit the stumps around his legs. 
Well, he's been targeting that leg stump for a while, and at last he's managed to get one round the back of an Englishman's pad. He zipped that one out of the rough. It was full, and that is the end of De Freitas. Bowled by Warren. Well, I still say he's uh, most times just as well off coming over the wicket because he spins the ball so far, even on uh, the flat part of the pitch. When he's coming out of the foot marks over the wicket, he'll get plenty of work on it. And De Freitas is the man going back now at 8 for 3.10. Still quite a bit of time to go, but uh, the Australians are moving fairly swiftly now. Shane Warren, 6 for 69 from 46 overs. Oh, and there's another one. A very, very short time at the crease for Martin McKay. A very, very good flipper from Shane Warren. That went zip. And Martin McKay also went zip. Yes, a magnificent flipper this was. It, uh, just watch it here. He's back, looking to, to play. Just watch it. Out it comes. It's dead straight and keeps going. And that would have hit the middle stump. I guess if he had a choice of a batsman to bowl league spin for a hat-trick. It asked for Philip Tufnell. So Shane Warne on a hat-trick here at the Gabba. Better try him with a flipper, I would think. No, it's a wrong one. The wrong one, and he's missed it by a whisker. <laughs> well, he's a great fieldsman, Philip Tufnell. He often falls over, and he's brought it into his batting as well. That certainly amused Shane Warne. That's out. That's the end of the Test match. And eight wickets for Shane Warne, 11 for the Test match. His best figures in a Test match. He's taken 11. A wonderful performance by the Australian team. They've batted well, they've bowled well, and they've fielded well, and they go one up in the series.